Hi, I'm Eileen. I'm here to talk about APIs in your product and how that's better than page objects. Um, this has a lot to do with a lot of overlap um, with the guy from Netflix, um, but this is like an even higher level. So um, first off, like page objects. Why do we actually use them? Well, there's like three main things that they want to solve. One is like repetition, maintenance, um, and readability. And basically, I don't think they do a very good job of solving any of them. So first of all, repetition. Having page objects will cut down on a lot of your repetition, but there's still a lot of tasks that you have to do like over and over for like every single task, like creating a new user or like maybe creating a new task so you can like test tasks. And also like how do you handle um, a bunch of stuff that you have to repeat but like goes over multiple pages, like maybe your account setup has like a three page process. So like this is what um, your code might look like um, if you're using page objects. Of course, this is all like pseudocode, it's not actually any language. Um, and in terms of maintenance, setting up page objects has like huge overhead, takes like a lot of time. Um, it's a lot of maintenance that QA needs to take on. So when your developers like change stuff, then like you have to go and like fix all your page objects. It's still very much dependent on um, the workflow of stuff like in your uh, app and very dependent on like structure and layout. Um, like maybe if you restructure a couple of steps and you have to like go fix all your page objects. Um, and the page structure layout dependency can be solved partially with IDs, but if your developers like aren't using IDs and you have to use like XPath, then everything's like brittle and like stuff breaks all the time. And readability, um, see repetition. If you have to like repeat a bunch of stuff, then it's not very readable. So what can we do instead? Based on the title of my talk, I think you can guess like APIs. So what do these APIs look like? You would have like code like this in your test. And then what does this code do? Basically something like this. This is not what our code like actually looks like, but it's a very simplified version. It just calls, um, it does a curl basically like a post or a get to some URL that's like actually in your app. So you might have some questions. Where is the code that actually does the stuff? Like, how do we actually create the network folder? It's part of your product. And why would we write our tests like this? First of all, um, it's a lot less repetition, and it makes your uh, tests like a lot clearer. Um, every single test will just test like one exact thing. Um, and the actual code to handle all this stuff is maintained by the developers instead of QA. Makes stuff a lot easier to read, and it forces your developers to develop the product in a way that is much more testable. Um, it actually kind of imposes like the MVC like model view controller framework. Um, also calling APIs directly is way faster than doing stuff through the front end like web UI interface. And it's a lot better than like strict SQL insertions if you want to just insert like a bunch of test data. Because like when you have an API, you have like basically a contract saying like these are the things that we need to do and this is the way that we do them. So of course, how do we actually test the API calls? We separate that out. So you have like one test that actually tests like creating a task by like going through and clicking on a bunch of stuff. And then every other task that needs a task, you would just call like the create task API. And so now maybe you're convinced that like uh, APIs are the way to go. So how do we actually do this? This is actually the unfortunate part. Basically, first you have to figure out like what the basic functions are in your product, like very high level functions, like I need a new user or I need a new workspace or I need a new task or I need to like delete a task, just very high level stuff. And you need to talk to your developers because this is something that they need to do. So it's pretty much impossible to like go back and like rejigger into an existing system. But like you can start with like new functionality that's like being added to your system. Like maybe you didn't have like properties and now like you're implementing that uh, into your product. So like a good place to start is like have some APIs like for this new feature. And especially for like new projects that like really don't have any code 
or um, like any tests, this is like the best way to start. Like you basically need to be in there on like the architecture discussions like of the product. So that's basically like all the downsides of uh, page objects. You need like a lot of cooperation or downsides of uh, APIs. You need a lot of cooperation from your developers and it's like a huge upfront development cost. And when I said like alternative, I kind of lied a little. It's actually very compatible with page objects. Um, it just solves a subsection of the problems that page objects are also trying to solve and it solves that subsection like in a much better way. So basically they're awesome but hard to use and you can use them with page objects. And I highly recommend that you go to our API page. This is something that we actually expose to customers. So um, like any user of our product can go and like call our API to do stuff directly like without going through our web UI. And of course, um, you can email me for more information. <laughs>